In this section, we're going to look at Hamiltonian mechanics from the perspective of information theory. So let's assume we have a distribution in the phase space in X and P. And again, if we assume that the system is deterministic and reversible, then it means that the final distribution is going to be a function of the initial distribution. But this is not enough. In order to have real determinism and reversibility, what we need to be able to do is track each of the elements of the distribution. So not only we have to say how the whole distribution map and evolves in time, but that this particular element of the distribution is going to be mapped to this particular element of the distribution. So the final state of each infinitesimal element needs to be a function of the initial state of each infinitesimal element. But this is not enough. Each element has to be as easy to track in the final state than in the initial state. So the amount of information that I need to specify to identify the initial element in the initial distribution has to be the same in the final distribution. And this information has a precise definition in terms of informational entropy. The information entropy is easier to understand for discrete variables first. It's this expression, and it gives you the absolute number of digits required to specify an element. So, for example, if you have a uniform distribution in four elements, you will need two bits. The first bit to know whether you are on the left side or the right side, and then to know if you are on the first element or the second element. This definition can generalize for continuous variables, but it can't give you the absolute number of digits because in this case it would be infinite. So what it gives you is the relative number of digits from a uniform distribution from 0 to 1. So for example, a uniform distribution from 0 to 2 is going to be plus 1 bit because we need to have one bit of information. We have to know whether we are on the left side on, or on the right side to then re-reach the entropy of a distribution from 0 to 1. So what we need to require for deterministic and reversible evolution is that the informational entropy remains constant through time. So we want the informational entropy of the final state to be the same as the one on the initial state. We're going to assume that our transformation is infinitesimal, so our final state is going to be t plus dt. And the information entropy at the next time step is going to be the initial entropy plus the integral of rho times the logarithm of the Jacobian. And this, of course, needs to be equal to the initial entropy. So what we want is this integral to be zero for any distribution of rho, so we want the logarithm of the Jacobian to be zero, which means we want the Jacobian to be one, which is exactly the same condition that we did find when we were talking about measurement. So why do we need the Jacobian to be one? Well, if we're transforming any infinitesimal element, we need to conserve two things. First of all, we need to preserve the contribution to the distribution, because if this element represents 1% of the distribution at the initial state, it's going to need to represent 1% of the distribution of the final state. But we'll also need to preserve the contribution to entropy, so this element needs to give the same contribution to so in order to do that, if the area would increase, then of course the rho would go down. And it, but if rho goes down, then the contribution to the entropy changes. And if the area shrinks, then rho would go up and it would change the contribution to the entropy. So the only way that we can preserve both the contribution to the distribution and both the contribution to the entropy is if rho remains the same and the area, of course, does not change. So now we have seen another way to see Hamiltonian mechanics for one degree of freedom. In front of the math, it preserves the area. In measurements, it preserves the uncertainty. In thermodynamics, we preserve the entropy. And for the information theory, the information entropy is what it gets preserved. And it's nice to see that all these elements are equivalent. Now, what we can note here is that we are always um, sort of double dipping on the same hypothesis. 
So for measurement, we had that the final state is a function of the initial state and then uh, the conservation of uncertainty. For thermodynamics, we had the, the same thing plus uh, conservation of energy. And for inflation theory, we had the, the same thing, uh, final state as a function of initial state and then conservation of uh, uh, entropy. Now, it would be nice to see these two actually coming from one condition. And this is what we're going to do in the next section.